went to court, was convicted, and was given a life term. They brought me through the system I ended up getting times. into a situation where I ended up hurting a man real bad, and um, it caused me to go to prison at 17. Last time I got, I got incarcerated was because of a burglary I committed. I caught a federal case, uh, bank robbery, when I was like 18 years old. I did an assault and battery, so it was a pretty big deal. So I had like a 25 year period there that I was always either incarcerated or on parole. I was inspired by my work in the prison system. For nine years, I was an artist facilitator at a California state prison. And that means I managed the program. And we did original theater every year. And I saw how powerful it was for the inmates. And I thought it would be equally powerful for people coming out of prison looking to re-enter their communities. Ms. Tavola is a magnificent woman. Hidden talents inside of me that Ms. Tavola saw. So when, when she came to, to start the po Poetic Justice Project, it was like, this is what we really needed. Consider this, one in every 31 Americans is incarcerated or on supervised release. California has added 21 prisons in the past 30 years, increasing the prison population from 23,000 to 170,000. California's recidivism rate is 70%, twice the national average. Prison rehabilitation programs have been drastically cut due to lack of funds. This includes education, vocation, and the arts. The Poetic Justice Project is a theater company designed to help formerly incarcerated individuals find their way back into society through the arts and to help bring a better understanding and powerful information about prison life to the general population. I, I got involved in a lot of stuff. I was out here, you know, writing on the walls, selling dope, you know, gang banging, shooting, do a, doing a whole bunch of other things that, you know, normally, 13 or 14 year old kid at the time wouldn't be doing these things but you also have to remember that with so many family members doing it it was like I wasn't going to get in trouble. William Lamar Brown worked with Deborah while he was an inmate at the California men's colony. He took us to his old neighborhood in East LA to help us understand how much he's grown with the help of the Poetic Justice Project. Uh, they filming it you know what I'm saying on the Poetic Justice Project you know what I'm saying uh -huh. talking to me about you know what I'm saying about the gang culture and you know what I'm saying they wanted to see something authentic so you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean like really it's what it is you know we here you know what I'm saying sometimes it's so hard for a person to get up out of this you know what I'm saying you so entrapped with the life here because you enthused by the things that you see in the streets and I seen him he came with my house about two months ago I was telling him how happy I am I'm, that you're doing a good thing and the right thing you know I took my <laughs> Friend over there, Lamar. Ain't no question. Right. I already know what it is. You know yes. what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make sure that you know I stay focused, man. I'm trying to do everything right. You know what I'm saying? And they really helping me. If the opportunity presented me in the way to where I could change my life, I would. You know what I'm saying? But it just ain't that easy, and that opportunity is slim to none. Walls getting closer, no space between my shoulders, begging for forgiveness. But this life is over, and this jacket I'm wearing. The message with Off the Hook is redemption is possible even in prison. So some of us are more of a tree in winter and stripped more of leaves and bare branched than maybe other people, but you know we have value and, and we're redeemable. There's a lot of people who will go to jail, do their time get out on a clean slate and society still looks at them as if they're behind bars. When we're up here performing, people, people, a, lot of, a lot of people say, wow, I never expected you guys to even act, sing, do anything, be out, you know, stay clean. They don't expect that from us and when they see us doing it, they open their eyes like, wow. At the end of the plays, we have talkbacks and people are affected emotionally and want us to give them something 
that they can do. I can tell them arts and corrections helps people because art helps people transform. It helps people express themselves. And when people get together to do art, differences fall away. I believe very strongly in empowering people through arts and creativity. What I, you know, what's coming out through Off the Hook is people are impressed with with how segregated it is in prison. It's very powerful to see in a, an environment like prison where the racial segregation is so extreme. It's powerful to see people cross those boundaries. something from what we're doing as well as being entertained but of course as you hear these people talk about it it helps everyone in it keep in mind who we are where we come from so it, we're living it participating in this play is keeping us clean and sober so it's, a, it's not just a play it's real life after a performance of off the hook Herbert Wells had a one-on-one -on -one with a teenager from a Santa Barbara Youth Authority boys camp. I ended up hurting somebody real bad. They're no longer here. And they was trying to give me a life sentence. I was 17 years old. I went to prison at 17. And when I got to my parole time, I knew I'd be like, okay, I got kids. I want to change. I want to do something different. Because I didn't take that time that I was sitting away from my family doing it to learn something, to learn a different way of living. I didn't practice none of that. So when I got out, I went back to the same things that I went back to the first time. I went back to the streets. That caused me to catch another turn. I told myself, this time that I'm incarcerated, I'm gonna do things different. I start going to the, to the um, arts and corrections. I start learning a different way of life that it did not always have to be about the things that I was taught. We're trying to really bring this play into, into the juvenile facilities, and I would like to see you. If you're still there, see you there. If not, you know, I would like to know that you're doing something better with yourself. Guillermo Willie was incarcerated for 38 years of his life, from Youth Authority, where he was arrested for battery on an officer, to his time in San Quentin, Folsom, and Vacaville prison for assaulting an inmate and killing another. Willie was paroled at the California Men's Colony, where he participated in arts and corrections and met Deborah Tabola. He now serves on the advisory board of Poetic Justice Project and is an amazing artist. People, people would always tell me that, officers would tell me, oh, you're good, and I thought, there was a time when I just copied and I didn't know how to do anything creatively. And once I started to, I knew something was happening it was like this dam burst inside of me and all this stuff was just coming out. I was able to draw things without looking at pictures. There's times when a painting happens in one sitting and there's times when I've worked on paintings for years. But this is the point where I would stop. I had a dream and there was a man in the dream telling me something about my artwork and it excited me. There was a man, there was an artist, and he was walking down the road and he had a bunch of paintings and he wanted to show the world what he was doing. And he stopped and he saw me passing by and he said, I I was about to show everybody what I'm doing and I was going to do this and this and I just ran into a man that's doing it. And uh, his mean, the meaning to me was, dude, you got it, you're gonna make it. Along with serving on the advisory board of Poetic Justice Project, Bull Cheney is also the director of eight sober living homes in the San Luis Obispo County area called Griffin Society, which offers an alternative way of life to people seeking rehabilitation. My mission for Poetic Justice is that it, that it happens really well in San Luis County, so well that the, another county asked us to come do it there. And that anywhere there's someone on parole or probation, 
they'll have a poetic justice project to go to. I thought, I've always thought how neat it was and inspiring for her to follow a dream and to do this. And I, I'm inspired by her listening to her inner voice. I just felt called to do it. I just, <clears throat> that's the only way I can explain it.